So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and he's going to talk a little bit about what does this look like from the collection and aggregation uh, and measuring standpoint. So I'll go ahead and hand it over, Mike. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Just going to pull that up here. Right now, I have us loaded right into Carbon Black Response. Uh, so Red Canary, we do endpoint detection and response using Carbon Black Response. And so in this particular case, as Casey was going through it, and we've been running this quite a bit as well, so we've got lots and lots of data um, from these bat files and all the other things we play with. And so in this particular case, right here, I just have us on the child process from command.exe, spawning RedServe32. And you can see where here, where that command line of downloading uh, that SCT file from our Atomic Red Team repository. Um, and then we have our calc being spawned. And so, again, that's a really good indicator of Casey Smith in your environment, uh, RedServe32 spawning calculator. <laughs> and then being he executed that bat file, you can see all that additional profiling data here. So within what he had executed was that flat was uh, all those different reg queries, a couple different WMIC, WMIC commands here, just gathering data, lots of discovery on the MITRE attack matrix there. So you know, IP config data, and it just keeps going, right? So there's a lot of data that's being gathered. Um, and then being that we had the two red serve 32s, as where your second one is. Um, so all of this is generating noise, right? And so you should be able to, you know, depending on your, your maturity within your organization, you can begin to measure and map these things out. Um, and so a huge shout out to Roberto Rodriguez. He built a heat map. Along, along the lines of the MITRE attack matrix here. And we referenced this on our Atomic Red Team blog post that we had uh, published yeah, a week or so ago now. Um, but this heat map is what we kind of based our, our whole detection criteria off of as well. Um, it allows us to begin to detect where we had, where begin to actually measure exactly what we saw in our environment. Um, and so like in my particular case, I'm gonna come up with a random scenario that all I have is carbon black response. I'm not centrally logging anything inside of a sim, a log aggregation, so nothing centralized. I'm having to physically, not physically, but having to go to my firewall and find out if somebody went to an IP address or domain. So um, being that we saw a lot of activity happening, network connections, calc, reg serve, all that, um, I want to touch on this real quick uh, before we go into actually techniques on the heat map. Uh, so back to the maturity model here. Um, Roberto broke this in here to begin to help you on your scores of what you're going to use on the heat map. Uh, so in this particular case, as you're going through the data and you're validating what you have controls for detection or prevention for, you can start to get the map where you are within your within all those criteria. Uh, so in this case, I don't have all my logs central, so it's probably a really bad thing. And if I'm hunting one endpoint at a time, I'm not being completely effective. Um, so more or less what he's saying is I need to get all my data into a good place, um, centralized and begin to perform my threat hunting, uh, correlation, whatnot, somewhere. Uh, even if I'm using scripts, um, I could use Windows event forwarding and use PowerShell to dig through all of my Windows event logs, right? Um, anything's better than nothing. Um, so I'm going to hop over to the heat map. You can kind of see here, it goes on about how you're collecting the right data, not just all the things, but you're collecting everything you need. So same with that sysmon config. Um, and write down, correlating, integrating different data types. So you're looking at sysmon, Windows event logs, and then carbon black response, whatever it may be. So back on the heat map here, we had a couple things execute, right? We had a scheduled task, for instance, um, that was made. So in case you made a scheduled task, I'm gonna go down here and say that I saw his scheduled task. I'm gonna put myself as a one. It changes the colors, similar to that score definition tab. So, um, and then I did see those red serve 32s happen. But again, I'm not centralizing my logging. Um, but in this case, for as an example, I'm just gonna put a three because I want the color to change. <laughs> um, and then we had, right, we had a bunch of registry queries happening and I actually don't have any watch list in carbon black looking for that right now. So I'm just gonna leave that as a zero. Um, and it goes on, right? We're looking for WMIC, anything like that that's happening. You can go and pop these guys in there. Um, all those net executions, uh, all those Windows event logs, all those types of things that were generating events during that execution of that bat file is all going to play key into um, 
tracking here on your heat map. Uh, I'll go ahead and pause. I think I said a lot there. Uh, any any questions, Casey? I haven't seen any questions come in at this point, Mike. Um, I think I think we're good so far. Excellent. Um, so yeah, as you begin to fill these in, whether you're doing this per lab, like per atomic test that you run, um, or you run a bunch of atomic tests and then you go back and you start to measure your progress on this, um, what you can do here, and this is the way the heat map works, is you just kind of highlight the rows, the numbers, you get your average score down here at the bottom with an Excel. You pop over to the Trends tab here, and this is now where you can begin to see over time how you've been progressing. Um, and so Roberto gives it to us here by just different quarters. Now you can type in your um, average scores right here. Obviously, most likely you can <laughs> uh, have these tie in automatically but you can begin to come in here and see where you've been progressing over time. And so he starts it off as <clears throat> pretty light at the beginning, and then over time, you've gone up to a four and a half on your average in Q4, which leads to here on this nice little graph, the different miter tack matrix pieces, um, and then also the scores right on there. Um, so a great thing to show management, your boss, how things have been progressing over time. Again, it's also something that you can use to test out new products, right? Um, that's probably one of the probably one of the higher use cases for the Atomic Red team is validating new products, whether the product can detect or prevent, um, or with that new product, how it works within my full security stack. Uh, and so this spreadsheet, it is released. It is on our GitHub repo. Uh, so if you go back to the Atomic Red team repo, it's down at the bottom. There's a link for it to Roberto. Uh, website um, and also the blog that talks about this and the spreadsheets there and also on our blog uh, Red Canary Atomic Red Team blog you'll see the link for this spreadsheet as well. Awesome great stuff Mike. Yeah thank you sir. There's a couple of questions that have come in here just uh, let's see here pull it up real quick. Uh, I think you addressed it some people asked about uh, have we automated the metrics with, with a sim uh, to automatically generate metrics? Oh. I guess, as opposed to manually entering these into a spreadsheet. <laughs> um, I haven't yet, and that's all going to depend on the, you know, the different sim platforms. I, I don't know the best way we could do that for, for everyone at once, right? <laughs> yeah, I get, it's cool. probably going to depend on each environment, but we'd love to get feedback if somebody does create some tools to, to pull different sims or uh, products to populate this. That'd be great feedback. We'd love to see it. Uh, I think you, you answered the uh, Excel spreadsheet is actually, there's a question came in about the Excel spreadsheet. I think we've answered that. That's Roberto's. We'll provide a, a link to his blog where that where we pulled that from for sure. Okay, so uh, we want to, we're, we're closing in. Uh, this is what we wanted to present today. This is really just the uh, beginning of what we have in mind for Atomic Framework. Uh, testing. So, um, oh, it looks like some questions are rolling in here. As we, there's a question that came in. Says also, has there been any analytics ran against the MITRE framework, uh, like in the MITRE car? Mm, I'm not. I'm not sure. That that may be uh, something we'll have to follow up with. Uh, I'm not not familiar with um, if if any analytics have been run against that framework. There, there, there probably has, but I'm not sure. So I will follow up. Uh, after this to get you guys that information. It's a good question, Ryan. Thank you. Other questions that are coming in for us? Um, here's a good question, Casey. Yep. Um, what uh, what other things do you see the future for within this project? What are, what are things coming down the pipe on the project? Sure, that's a good question. I think at this point, one of the things that we've looked at is especially expanding our attack chains for folks. So like maybe we want to uh, provide some attack chains that model after a particular actor. Uh, so take take some group uh, that may be conducting activity. Maybe you want to look at like uh, APT32 that runs RedSurf32. Maybe you want to take some of their capabilities and see uh, how your telemetry collects if you were to go against that adversary. So um, that that's one thing I have in mind. Um, the other things would be just continuing to expand coverage. We release the products and we know there's gaps in some of the techniques. 
So we would also be looking to expand where we, where we want different atomic tests to be added uh, and also look to the community to provide feedback on maybe things they'd like to see or where we could add additional techniques. So uh, it's all open source. Um, just to bring up the link again so everybody has it, uh, if you're curious about where to find uh, the Atomic Red Team, you can go out to the Red Canary Git page. You'll also be some follow-up information from this uh, webinar too. So there's a couple different places we'll be able to provide information for that. So um, those are a couple things that I have in mind. I'm not sure, like Mike, if you'd like to speak to some other additional things, but those are the things I sort of have in mind, like creating more chain reactions, uh, getting expanded coverage on techniques, and looking for feedback from the community on where we can improve. Yeah, I, I think that that all hits it. And I know we want to try to get to the place where we have more adversary simulations and whatnot. Um, Roberto has been working on that within his uh, threat hunting playbook uh, repository. So converting those into just chain reactions and allowing that to uh, just be part of the project. I, mean, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, and just a just a yeah. reminder. You you guys are welcome as we as we expand this project. Uh, you can send an email to research at redcanary.com and we'll be able to take that directly from you as a way to reach out to us and get additional feedback from you, things you'd like to see, additional uh, collaboration on the project. So I think, I don't think any other questions. Oh, we have more questions rolling in. All right, hold on. Bear with me as I get used to this panel here trying to find the questions. Uh, I wasn't scrolling down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the question was, uh, any other recommendations aside from Carbon Black? Love the product, but an but answer from client clients is very expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not going to speak to that at this point. I think we're, you know, this this framework is designed to test multiple different products. So as far as making a recommendation, uh, I, I would encourage you to go into the marketplace and see what might work best for you, your size of your organization. Uh, we use Carbon Black here, but there's certainly other solutions that are out there. Uh, that may work better for what you're looking for. So I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, looks like another question came in here. It says, uh, in terms of testing solution, how does the heat map allow you to differentiate between the threat blocked, threat detected, uh, threat information available and gathered for hunting? So that's a good question. Mike, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. And that's, that's a solid question because that spreadsheet is very focused on threat hunting and maturity for threat hunting. Um, so yeah, the, the whole idea there is, is you will need to either build out the other sections within the spreadsheet um, or use it just as a way to validate, you know, you have the capabilities to detect um, or determine that threat was blocked, right? Um, it, we don't have it built in there today, but that's, that's actually something we probably should really start looking into considering is adding on to that for Roberto and push that into his people as well. Yeah, good question. Uh, another question came in and said, are we looking at the possibility of some techniques to show the value of disrupting chains through the deception techniques and disruption logs or detection capabilities? It's, it's something, uh, I'll go ahead and answer this one. It's something I'm certainly looking at. Uh, I think as an adversary, if you land an environment and you know your telemetry is being studied, there's certainly value in disrupting, uh, degrading that performance of that telemetry. We don't have anything like that yet. I don't know. I'm not aware of any of those techniques in the MITRE framework, but that's certainly something maybe on the horizon uh, that we want to be thinking about. So how do you protect the integrity of this telemetry collection uh, on those endpoints? So that's a really good question. Uh, let's see. Another question I rolled in said, uh, with certain APTs focusing on certain verticals, are there cases based upon those verticals, retail, government, healthcare, et cetera? So that's actually a really good question. That uh, kind of speaks to, we hope you... Uh, would be able to build these chain reactions that are specific to your industry. So uh, we, we don't have anything like that. So we don't have anything right now today that would say, hey, if, if you're in finance, these are the actors that you see and these are the tests that you could run. Uh, it, it may be something worth expanding. Mike and I can talk about that. It's, really good. it's a good idea. Uh, but I'd also look to you um, as, as a defender. You know your industry best and, and collecting that information. So. Uh, the really good, really good question. We don't have anything like that today. So, Let's see. Uh, one of the questions came in and said, "Do we consider Sysmon EDR light?" Um, I, I'm going to just uh, say it's a it's a place to begin, right? Uh, I'll let Mike maybe take that question on where where he thinks it's positioned. But <laughs> any visibility, my opinion is, any visibility is better than uh, nothing. And so it's really a good place to start. It may not work for every organization, but I'll let you take that, Mike. 
<laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, it absolutely it can be, right? I mean, with the right uh, type of infrastructure and, and everything like that, it, it could definitely help get you to a better place, you know, and, and eventually over time, you know, you may look to more of an enterprise product. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, data is data. You can at least begin to review and hunt through the things and have better detection than you did yesterday. Okay, uh, a couple other questions have come in about different, uh, some different MITRE projects that are happening. Um, I'll try and follow up on those because I don't have information on those right now. So some good questions came in about additional projects that MITRE is working on. Uh, again, I would probably point you to just to make sure that you're checking out the MITRE page, that they're, they own that framework, uh, and that may be a good place to drive more information. The, the things that we're sort of doing here are related to taking that and allowing you to run some tests and sort of seed those logs and, and get some telemetry back. So hopefully that answers that question. I'll, I'll provide some follow-up in the email that comes out after this. So it looks like I don't see any other questions at this point. So hopefully this has been helpful um, for everybody. So please provide any feedback to us, to Mike and myself at research at redcanary.com. Uh, any other closing thoughts, Mike? I think we're doing okay on time, so. Yeah, um, I know the uh, this webinar is recorded, so it will follow up after this, and the PowerPoint slides will be there. Um, there wasn't much in the PowerPoint piece, but at least the webinar will have the actual of um, all the different labs we ran through. Um, and then also the pieces for um, the, the bat files, they will be on the repo here pretty soon. Uh, so you guys can go down, go download them, you know, or fork the repo and execute them out of your own. Um, play from play with those things and build your own chain reactions. Um, if you build your own chain reactions, please, please push them back. We'd love to have that community feedback and participation, adding new things into this repository. Um, but yeah, that's all. This is this is great. Thank you guys. Yep, and yeah, just you touched on something, Mike. I just want to make sure we sort of go on the record and say is that don't. Uh, it's not a good idea to run code directly off a, a Git repo that you don't control. Uh, so we've been running these directly off of our, our Red Canary uh, in our example, but like, we definitely encourage you to, to bring this down locally, host it somewhere internally where you can control the test and things like that. It's all open source for you to do what you want. Uh, but generally best practice, we don't just run code from somebody's Git repo that you don't have ownership of. So just, just to make sure we get that out there. Okay, well thanks again everybody for your time. Um, we look forward to doing this again. We'll keep you posted on some things that we're looking for working down the, uh, in the future. Uh, really appreciate your time. Again, research at Red Canary for feedback uh, for Mike and I, and uh, hopefully this has been very helpful. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.